Hello Underdog, the practitioner here, Bachelor of Science student, Chemistry major, Mathematics minor, Magician, Parapsychologist, Technical Agnostic, and Fortean Skeptic. Um, I would like to reiterate a couple of things that you have said and correct a couple of minor adjust, um, mistakes. One of the things you said was that reality is constantly changing every minute to minute. That might possibly be true. However, to use your example of the Swiss Army knife, uh, I'll use my Leatherman for this example. Let me see if I can find it. No matter, I'll just have to use this screwdriver instead. I will say the screwdriver will fall downwards as I let it go. Lo and behold, it does. But again, 10 seconds later, I also say the screwdriver now will also fall down again when I let it go. When I explain that, and I can be reasonably certain within 99.9 to say 5 million decimal places that every time I let this screwdriver go and I am inside the gravitational field of this planet that, this, that the screwdriver will fall downwards. See the changes are minute. Though the universe changes from minute to minute, the change is not that very large. It's micro change, which means that what might be true which means that from minute to minute, yes, true is not. Uh, yes, truth is not everlasting. However, there are some reasonable working theories which um, describe physical laws and the like, which can work um, from minute to minute over a span of say several million years. Um, the theory of evolution is one is one such example. The other thing is that um, the issue of whether or not this screwdriver that is here now is the same screwdriver that this screwdriver that I'm referring to say a second from now that could be debated about whether or not it's the same screwdriver or not see yes the reality is always changing but remember here's the question I would ask you is it really a different screwdriver uh, if there are infinite numbers of them why are they uh, if there are infinite numbers of them why have they not all been measured as infinite or is it possible that we're looking at the same object from different points in space-time? I.e. it's moving along a track and you can uh, interject at any point along its movement along the track um, say from a higher order dimension vis-a-vis -vis time and then pluck it out of its point and re-superimpose it somewhere else. What if this object is moving because like all of us moving on a planet through space and time around a star which is moving around a galaxy which is moving around a cluster of galaxies inside of an, exp an ever expanding universe is it possible the exact same atoms in here are just simply moving and shifting position for example this screwdriver looks the same as the screwdriver from six seconds ago now the question is are we talking about an entirely different screwdriver and all the laws all of, all of a sudden completely changed or is there an over overriding slash govern um, overall governing principle pertaining to its construction, which may be um, you know be giving a general working theory over a longer period of time, which incorporates over several minutes or several million years? And also, we can't uh, as you were saying, like science and logic, we could find everything in this moment, but then we'd have to change it to the next. There's a problem with your line of reasoning. You're saying that it's impossible to use science and logic to find absolute truth because of the fact that, for instance, since it changes from minute to minute, we can't know anything. That is the opposite extreme. This is called a false dilemma or a bifurcation. It's a, it's a fallacy in reasoning. Because of the fact that the changes are not drastic from minute to minute, we can still get very, very close to absolute truth. And eventually, especially if we're looking at a particular moment in time, or if we can get access to time with time travel, as certain new theories are suggesting might be possible in a few million years, um, if time becomes an accessible dimension, then we can look at every point in space and time, and therefore, at that exact moment, be able to get absolute truth uh, through, pure, uh, through pure years of time travel. That being aside, the point is, is that we science is not talking and logic are not talking about absolute truths. What we are talking about is greater probability versus lesser probability. Um, 
uh, at least this is, uh, unless of course the guy you're responding to completely missed that point, at which point I'm going to have to call him on it. Um, but the point being, science works within confidence intervals. We make sure that depending on the particular science, um, with physics and chemistry, which is what my major is, um, uh, well, um, well, with chemistry, my major, we work to we want to make sure that the probability of something being accurate is ninety uh, the, of a new thing uh, is that it's that it is ninety nine point nine 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 percent true. Something any new theory in a new experiment has to show that it deviates from the expected norm or chance levels. Um, or that it, that it shows a 1 in 1,000 probability of being resulting by purely by chance or by purely norm expectations. Therefore, because of that, we are expecting high accuracy ratios from minute to minute. Now, the thing is, if something is at that high level, then the question is, which one are you going to work with? Uh, which assumption are you going to work with? Are you going to reject that assumption saying, like, oh, it changes from minute to minute, and therefore it couldn't possibly be true? Or you are going, are you going to work with the greater probability until new evidence comes along, which tosses out the previous theory as being less likely, and then you reform a new theory. Somebody once asked, um, a, a theist once set a uh, ten thousand dollar challenge to atheists to demonstrate how they could um, positively prove, uh, you know, po how they could um, believe or show that they believe that the sun would come up every day. Here's the thing. An atheist responded that he didn't believe it. He didn't believe it with, uh, with pure faith. What he did was he tested it. He put it forward as a new theory that he believed that the earth was revolving around the sun and that the sun would rise in the east because the, sun, the earth travels on its axis from east to west. Or was it west to east? Sorry, west. I, I got my directions mixed up. Either way, point being is that his hypothesis states that the testable prediction is that the sun would rise every morning. And he tests this every morning by looking out his window and checking to see if the sun rises. If for one day the sun fails to rise, he then checks his theory. And if there's a, and if it turns out to be incorrect, he scraps it and starts a theory anew. That's what we're doing here. This is not relativism in terms of truth. Um, yes, there is an absolute truth. Yes, that absolute truth is fluctuating. But the physical laws govern from time to time. And that's what we're talking about in terms of absolute truth. We're not talking about the absolute truth of how of everything is in that particular moment. That won't be available until time travel becomes practical. Until then, and, be, and besides, the other thing that we're working with as well is that you can never get 100% efficient, 100% uh, knowledge in science. It works based on statistics and probability. The only case where you can never get 100% proof in anything is mathematics. Until then, it's just an example of probabilities. Toodles.